board and I'm just gonna um, share my screen and do just a quick recognition because who doesn't love recognition? So. I always forget to push the actual share screen button. Here we go. Um, awesome. Okay, so just want to run through, I can't believe, like it's only July or June, sorry, not July, it's only June 17th and we've got like so many people already creaming Success Club, which is amazing. Um, so I know, I don't think Martha's on the call or, or Jody or Larissa right now, but they're all killing it this month already. And so many of you are so close. I, I know that, and I know that some of those numbers went up today and haven't been really cleared. So. Stop it. Four. <laughs> I'm gonna mute you out. No. Sorry. Oh, I think she muted herself. We're good. Um, yeah, so I think it's really exciting what's happening. I think everyone on the call knows the, the value of Success Club and why it's, um, like it's such a key performance indicator. But I think something I've really learned over the year, almost two years that I've been doing this, is that even if you don't hit it one month, as long as you're consistently doing the behavior, if you miss it one month, you'll, you'll like maybe overcompensate for it the next month. It's an indicator for you to be pushing for. So it's not something you need to stress out about if you miss, but I think it's a great thing to measure each month and target for. So congrats to everyone who's already creaming it this month. And there's still like two weeks left and I expect to see more people over that number five mark, which is great. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, after summit, the weekend after summit, July 25th, is Super Saturday. Um, in the GTA, it's Super Sunday. And I really, really, really encourage people to find one in their area and show up for it because I used to avoid these. And I think it was the first one I finally went to that my business really started taking off after that. Um, because you actually feel like you're, you know, you're a part of a group that's near you as well. And because we're kind of spread all over between, I feel like we have a great Ontario connection and a great BC connection, which is awesome, but we're all still spread all over such a large country. Uh, so I found it was really great. It's also awesome to hear the announcements that come down from corporate that day and um, about new products, new programs, anything exciting that's about to roll out in the next quarter. And then you get to you often get a fun workout and you get to just kind of connect with other coaches in your area and get some training. So I really, I, I feel like, feel strongly about those things that like, if you want to go up, you got to show up to events. That's something you'll hear around. So I, I, I encourage you to do that. And if there is not one anywhere near you, if you're an Emerald coach, you can run your own um, and they'll send you the video. You just need to register it and I can help you with that if you need trouble. But I would put that on your calendar for a Super Saturday or Super Sunday, and you can search the closest ones in your area through the online office. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone, I, I, I think I'd kind of forgotten about this, so I apologize, but um, Carl Deichler is having like a June Diamond Dash challenge, and um, whether you feel like you're close to Diamond or not, I think that there's still two weeks left in it, and it gives you sort of pretty strong recognition from Carl Deichler himself of if you end up going Diamond. And I think that, um, again, even if you feel like you're far away, like just kind of dialing in and really putting focus on your business and moving it towards that diamond rank will really push you further so that if you miss it this month, you can hit it in the next month or two. Just want to make sure you guys knew about that if you're, if you're a competitive person and you like those competitions. Um, and finally, I want to introduce the lovely Shaylin, who is going to talk with us tonight. And I really appreciate you being on tonight. Shay because um, she is a diamond coach and she just had a like, she has a four month old baby and, and an older little boy too so she's no stranger to know what it's like to live a busy, busy life and also go through like pregnancy delivery having a baby and all that crazy time so she recognizes how busy that can be um, but she's known I think certainly throughout the FFP for running amazing challenge groups and I'm excited to take notes tonight so Thanks, Jay. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop my screen share so you can. And um, I'm going to, and she's beautiful. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Thank you so much, Bria, for having me on your team call. This is so cool to see your team and get to put some faces with names and things like that. So it's great to meet you all. And thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time tonight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, I'm just going to keep it pretty brief so I, I won't keep you guys here hopefully too long, but 
please feel free to um, ask questions. I won't probably be able to see the chat box when I'm sharing my screen, but hopefully I can go back through them when I'm done with my slides. Um, but I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit. Bria asked me to talk about challenge groups. Um, and thanks so much for the sweet introduction, Bria. I don't know that I'm necessarily the, the perfect person for this, but I just, I kind of have, you know, my way of doing things. And so take what this, what you will out of it. And um, I know you guys are all probably doing an amazing job yourself. So I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, can you guys, let's see, hold on one second. Is this small or is this regular size? I think it's, it's not the whole screen, but it's big enough to see. Okay, let me do the whole screen. I just won't be able to see you guys, so. Okay. So, um, coaching fun, focused, and effective challenge groups is what I've titled this, and we just like to keep it, um, like I said, I'm going to keep it kind of brief, but really what I think the most important thing is to find your niche and think outside of the box. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, there are so many coaches, through almost 300,000 to be exact, those aren't necessarily all active coaches, um, but there are so many coaches that are offering challenge groups. So what makes you unique? And I know that we talk a lot about like finding our brand and you know, what, what makes us unique so that people would want to work with us. And I think you should use that when it comes to offering your challenge groups. So um, what, I, what I like to do is, you know, say everybody, everybody has a unique talent or something about them that would set them apart. Um, for me, for example, I also do artistry. And so something that I like to do uh, probably once every quarter is I offer, like, a beauty – and health related challenge group. And so that, it, it's really kind of fun because what I do is I, t I focus on health in the most of the group and then Thursdays I like to focus on something beauty related. And I think the two go really hand in hand. But there's all kinds of things you could do. You know, if you're an accountant, you could do like some kind of a financial group with your, with your challenge group or, you know, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be like a split subject like that, but just think about what makes you unique so that you can attract people to you um, and the, the type of people that you would want to work with. So have the bigger picture in mind. What I mean by that is remember that great challengers make great coaches. So again, you want to attract the type of challengers to your challenge group that eventually you would like to see on your team. So it's kind of like playing chess. You're always thinking a few steps ahead Right. So even I, the thought even starts when you're inviting to challenge groups, you know, like would these, would these people make good, you know, great challengers and then great coaches and would I want them on my team. And you want to create an experience from beginning to end for these people so that they really get excited about it and they walk away and they're like, wow, I, I understand the culture of what they're doing here. Um, and they really, you know, enjoyed the group. So, Oh, my screen doesn't want to move. There we go. Um, again, just an example of something that I do. I called this last one, this last month, Muscles and Mascara. And as kind of a fun little incentive, I actually offered for the first three people to join my group with the purchase of a challenge pack, which also gets me to Success Club. Um, they actually got, I can't see the, the like, video at all, so hopefully you guys can see this. They got like a little makeup kit for free with that. It was a little bit of money out of my pocket, but it was worth it for me. Um, and I definitely don't think that you have to spend money to incentivize people. That's not what I'm saying, but it was just kind of a fun little thing. And then throughout the uh, challenge group, I showed them through a video tutorial how to actually use the products that were in that. So that was just something that I used my own unique skill set um, to, make, to make it more exciting for them. And they really loved it. It was a huge success. This month, I think what I'm going to do, um, or actually I should say in July, what I'm going to do is actually a couples group because I have a brand new coach who just signed up her husband and they are next door to me. And my husband also wants to join a challenge group. So we were like, let's do a couples challenge group in July. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to title Beauty and the Beast. And we're going to have the ladies do 
well, it doesn't have to just be the ladies, but we're going to have 21 Day Fix Extreme and Body Beast in there. So that's going to be kind of a fun little thing that we're going to do for next month. What a great just, idea. I just, just some ideas. Yeah. So it's just, you know, kind of keeping it fresh and new and things like that. So um, once, I, once I invite people and I, you know, you always want to create something unique and beautiful as far as like something to, to draw people into your group when you're, you know, posting about it. We all know we want to plant our seeds maybe two to three weeks ahead and, you know, or our jabs, whatever you want to call them. And then when you throw that right hook or your call to action, you want to make sure it's a really, it's a beautiful piece. Um, preferably not with beach body all over it. You want to have it kind of unique so you can use, you know, like a pick monkey or camp or something like that. But once you get them into your group, um, and you probably already do this, but I just wanted to talk about this really quick. You want to make sure that you have the, the group page loaded and ready to go before you add any of them to it. And I know that you have to have um, one person added to it before you can even open the page. What I do is I just always add my husband and then I remove him. He is always getting thrown around in my business. Um, but anyway, you want to open that page up, create your cover photo, definitely put a description in there, and upload all of your content. Not, not your um, post for the day, but what I mean by content is like your meal plans, your documents, things like that that you want. Um, your challengers to have access to. And so that when they come in, they're not coming into just an empty page and they're not really sure, they're kind of scratching their head like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? So you wanna create that welcoming environment just right from the get-go um, before you add anybody. And you wanna add a clear description and pin it to the top um, of kind of what you expect or what they should expect out of a challenge group because a lot of people don't know going in. We kind of assume that they know what to expect, but they really have no idea. So I always want to be clear about my intentions of, you know, here's how the challenge group works. Um, and I always encourage interaction right out of the gate so that they know that they should interact on the page. Um, and it's not just a soapbox for me to preach on. I really want them to interact with each other and with me and, you know, show pictures and things like that. Um, typically, I will do a Zoom chat probably the Saturday or Sunday before the group starts just so we can all see each other. We can all, you know, hash out questions and things like that. And it's just a really great way to connect with your challengers um, and a great way for them to see you as a leader and a coach. The prep week, I always schedule, let's just say, for example, I'm doing 21 day fix, right? We know that 21 day fix is three weeks long. But I do technically my challenge group for four weeks because I have one full week of prep. So what my prep week usually looks like is day one, Monday, would be introductions. And the other reason, let me just backtrack a little bit. The other reason why I do a prep week is that day one is their deadline to order their challenge pack. And so during that week, we are getting to know each other and we're doing our prep work while we are waiting for our challenge pack to arrive in the mail. So that's why I do it that way. Um, anyway, day one, Monday would be introductions. I always do introductions. Um, it's really fun too if you can record a video to just welcome them into the group. Day two, we set our SMART goals and share them with the group. Day three, we do visualization and mental preparation because as you guys know, the mental part of starting a program is huge. Um, day four, clean eating basics, how to prepare and how to go shopping. So I like to kind of educate them on, for example, uh, a lot of people don't realize that when you go into a grocery store, the way that the grocery store is laid out is you should do like 90% of your shopping on the outer perimeter. And the reason for that is because all of our, you know, fresh produce um, and the healthier clean options are on the outside perimeter. Once you start to go into the inner aisles, you're, you're getting into your, you know, your chemicals and your processed food and things like that. So just some clean eating basics to kind of get their wheels turning before I ask them to toss things and go shopping. Um, day number five, I usually do there before pictures and measurements. Um, I don't always make them share those right out of the gate with the group, but I do encourage that. 
And if they aren't comfortable sharing it in the group, I do ask them to please privately message me just so that I can help to encourage them throughout the, the way. So we know that people can be a little bit shy about that and it can be a little bit touchy. Day six is when I ask them to actually toss the junk and I hold myself accountable too. I show them a picture of me tossing out my cookies or whatever I had had, my wine, ah, um, things like that. Day seven is always, always, always in my group um, food prep and I ask them to wash their, their workout clothes and have them laid out and ready to go. So they're all ready and set to go by their official day one of the challenge group. Um, and I always do themed days. So these are just a few examples. You guys probably do something similar to this in your groups, but I like to have Motivation Monday. That just helps to pump them up for the week. Um, I usually go onto YouTube or something and find like a motivational video. And it's usually something that's like either a tearjerker or, I mean, they know it's coming. They know that they're gonna get pumped up on Monday because they need to start out of the gate strong. Tasty Tuesday or Tip Tuesday is typically when I'll share like um, great recipes or tips that I've learned along the way. Think like that. Um, Work It Wednesday. This is typically when I will do a little mini challenge in my group, and I incentivize them with little prizes. And I'll talk about those prizes here in just a few minutes. But just a few examples of that would be like wall squat challenges, who can hold a wall squat in the longest, you know, post your video. And these are really fun, especially if you have people that are kind of like, they're a repeat challenger, and they, they can compare their wall squat video time to from last month to this next month, and they're always stronger, so they think that's really cool. Um, plank challenges, an add-on ab workout. Autumn Calibres has some awesome ab routines on YouTube, and so I'll just add one of those in on Wednesday. And the reason why I do this on Wednesday is because it's, it's hump day. It's like people are starting to maybe think about losing steam on Wednesday or, you know, they get out of their routine or things like that. And so it's just something to kind of incentivize them. And I always attach a small little gift or something to, um, to the winner or whoever participates. And here's my, my, the biggest thing I want you to take away from doing these is I always encourage them to post, let's say for example, their plank on their personal page and tag me in it. And I do that for a couple of reasons. I want to find out who has the guts to do it, first of all. Um, I want other people to see that they are participating in a challenge and that they're having fun with it. And I also, you know, if they aren't going to coach in the future, that gets my name out there for their potential friends to know that I'm a coach, or if they decide to coach later, um, then people have already seen that they've started to do this. So it's just kind of a, a great way to incentivize them to tag you and to post on their own wall when they're doing things. And that's really scary for your challengers, but sometimes you'll have a, a pocket of people that will that'll do it, and it's really fun. Um, Thirsty Thursday, just some examples of some things that I've done that have been fun in my group. Shakeology recipe share, um, you know, you ask them to share all their favorite Shakeology recipes, but you also can add a link to your Shakeology website, and that is a treasure trove. I don't know if you guys have played around on that much, but the Shakeology website is amazing, um, and it has all the recipes and the calorie content of those recipes in there, so they, they really like to have that as a resource. Um, the Shakeology Ingredient Hunter Challenge, this one's a lot of fun, too. This one is a great way for you to kind of end up being the, the pupil, the student, and them to be the teacher. So I ask my challengers on Shakeology Ingredient Hunter Challenge Day to research one ingredient from Shakeology because you'd be surprised at how many people don't actually even look at the ingredients of this stuff. How are they going to continue to spend $100 a month on it if they don't know what's in it, right? So we want to make them fall in love with these ingredients and why they're so important. So research one, at least one Shakeology ingredient, and then share with the group and teach the group what you learned about it. And that has been really fun because you can also kind of start to see some natural leaders come forward with that. And you're always thinking, okay, who would make a great coach, right? So that's a good way to find, find that out. At H2O chugging contest, we've done those before, you know, track your, your water and 
and tag me in it throughout the day. And then, you know, whoever wins that maybe will win a Shakeology Shaker Cup or something like that. Something fun. Um, more ideas. Food fact or funny Friday. I like to keep it pretty light in my groups on Fridays and just, you know, it's the end of the week. Great job. Celebratory. Things like that. But we also share what our plan is for the weekend because it's easy to stay on track for those first five days, but it's the weekend that kills us. And you got to think the weekends are so important. So I always ask my challengers every Friday to share with us, what's your plan for the weekend? You know, what are you doing? You're going to a barbecue, a wedding or whatever. And what is your plan to stay on track? And how can we help support you to do that? And then we cheer them on throughout the weekend when they when they show their accountability of them at the at the wedding, not eating the wedding cake or whatever, you know. So, um, and we also again, I like to have like funny things. This is a picture of me that I posted on Richard Simmons jumping over a rainbow, and that was me, um, you know, prepping them for the the weekend to have a great, fantastic weekend. I'm just kind of a goof, so I like to do just silly things like that for them. I think they can start to feel like they're in some like really serious situation and, and I want them to have fun with it. Saturday is always our Saturday, which means if you've ever done T25, you know what that is. Um, but that's when I ask my challengers to read, measure and weigh and check in with their, with their progress, either privately or on the wall. And then Sunday, like I'd mentioned before, that's always prep day. Um, I don't typically give them like a post on Sunday and let them have that kind of like as their rest day but I always ask them to post their accountability pictures of them prepping for the week, and I always post mine and, and let them know what I'm prepping. So um, again, like I mentioned, I just, I think it's great to think outside of the box. Um, a few things that I have done in the past, I don't do this every time, these are just some things that I kind of like pulled out of you know, the past of what I have done. Um, for my challenges is once my, once the challenge was over, I actually had um, whoever was local come over and we did um, the first three bullets on here were actually kind of combined into one event. So we did a healthy barbecue and we, I had them all bring their clothes that they couldn't fit into anymore. And we donated that uh, to the women and children's center here, which is a shelter for women and children. And that was really cool because I was able to take a picture of my SUV. I have a, an SUV and the back was like overflowing with um, these clothes that my challengers had shrunk out of and we were donating them. So that was really a cool thing and I was able to post that on my wall and stuff. Um, and then another thing I've done is a balloon launch where I just got a bunch of helium balloons and I had them write on strips of paper things that they wanted to let go of forever or, or habits that they had let go of in the challenge. So let's say, for example, um, you know, they were a soda drinker and they were able to kick their soda habit. And so they wrote that in, on the balloon and they tied it and then they let it go. And I think that just the vis visualization of that helps them to kind of really let go of that and embrace their new lifestyle. So that was a lot of fun. Um, vision boards, we've done vision boards before. You used to be able to actually do an online vision board through Oprah's website. I don't know if that feature is still active or not, but if it is, um, that's a great way to do it. They can just do it virtually and then they can upload it right from that website onto Facebook um, and share with the group. So that was kind of fun. Uh, again, I've, I've actually mentioned the reverse teaching role before, but just always think of ways that you can kind of get them to be involved. Um, I think it was actually uh, Chanel who had mentioned on one of our calls, and Chanel, I think this was a brilliant idea that you have your um, challengers, I think in the last week, pretty much to take over the challenge group. I haven't done that, but I think that's genius. So I just wanted to give you a little shout out for that. I think that's really great. And then any you know point systems for prizes and things like that, everybody kind of has their own way of doing those, but you can play around with that. Um, just a few tips. Challenge groups are a great opportunity for you to teach. So you want to make sure that you are being seen as the professional, as the one who is knowledgeable, um, not soapboxy or anything like that. But, but they're a great way for you to actually teach. Um, you have to remember that people don't know 
what we maybe consider basic things. So it's a great time to have that opportunity to teach people. I've mentioned before, offer a little bit of comic relief. There's times to be serious, like Mondays are serious. Like it's balls to the wall, if I can say that. And like, you know, you gotta get serious, but then offer some comic relief and let them actually see your personality throughout the um, challenge group. You might be working with people you've never met before, so they need to be able to connect with you. Um, and most importantly, I think, is that you yourself have to stay accountable. Um, if if you aren't posting your workout pictures and you're not posting your um, your food accountability and things like that, it's hard to ask someone else to do that. So you want to make sure that you are not only a teacher and a leader, but you're also actually in the trenches and proving that you're doing this right there with them and you're locking arms and you're going forward with them. So I think that's really important. Share all of your recipes and tips. Even if you're not a great cook, you know, pull out the recipe guide and be like, hey guys, I made the grilled cod tonight and it was great or whatever. Um, and any tips that you have. I know Bria and I have kind of exchanged tips and, and stuff for some of our like clean eating groups and I use those all the time. I think they're, they're really great. Um, get organized, like I mentioned before, but also not only before the, the, the challenge group, but throughout, you want to actually have a plan so that you don't sit down at the computer in the morning and you're like, oh God, what am I going to post on today? You know, um, have it all preloaded either on your computer or on your phone so that you can just post on the fly. But with that being said, definitely keep your finger on the pulse of the group and kind of like what they want to hear. So even if you have maybe something that you had scheduled for that day to post, but you feel like they needed to hear something else, you know, change your post up a little bit, but make sure you've got at least enough preloaded content that you don't feel stressed every day trying to come up with something new. Um, something that I think is one of the most important things too is to ask engaging questions throughout the challenge group and copy and paste those into a document because those are going to be testimonies for you. For example, when you're inviting people and you can, you can put a little quote um, and say, you know, here's what the last person said about my challenge group. Or you can put it on your, with their permission, of course, you can put it on your like page and, and you know, have that be an actual quoted testimony. So, and, and you don't have to straight out ask for their testimony, just ask engaging questions that you know are going to get that answer and that testimony for you. Like, how are you liking your Shakeology? Or how is it making you feel? Or, or whatever. Um, check in weekly through private messages. So make sure that you are connecting with each challenger at least once a week and just say, Hey, how is it going? I wanted to, you know, tell you how great you're doing or, or whatever. See, you know, how things are going a lot of times. Um, and this is totally common. So don't feel like you are the only one if this ever happens, but it's totally normal. If you start to have people go silent on you, but don't take it personally. Because there have been so many times where I have people start out of the gate really strong and then they cool off and you're kind of like, what's going on? You know, I'm sure we've all had this happen and you never know what's happening in their personal life. So you definitely can't take it personally. I've actually had people going through divorce, death in the family, things like that, like mid challenge group. And I thought maybe it was something I had done and come to find out it wasn't. But just be, you know, continue to be there for them and encourage them. Um, create a culture and a belief in the products and the company from the get-go. Um, let them know how much you love Beachbody as a company. But let them see that you are more than Beachbody. But we do want to start to create that culture because we want them to fall in love with the company um, and the products so that they will have a testimony of those things and then they will they will want to coach so just some ideas for some prizes again i don't i don't think that you need to spend a bunch of money on your challenge groups that's not the idea but some things that i like to send out for um incentives or prizes would be like the little packets of dna you can get these in packets and they are about 92 cents a piece um i also have these are little little like hair ties, I don't know if you guys can see these, that I, I just make, like you can buy the stretchy fabric at 
like a craft store and you can just make these. When you buy these, they're stupid expensive. So just make your own. Um, I always get like R and R packets. Again, those are $1.37 a piece. P90X bars, $1.50 a piece. The Shakeology shaker cups, I don't have an exact price breakdown on those, but I think they're a dollar or something. Um, I buy these by the um, I have like three boxes full of them in my garage right now. I always have those on hand. Those are really inexpensive. Socks are a great thing, like little workout socks. I'm just I have like this bin of little things so I was gonna show you guys. So I always just find these great deals of workout socks. They're like a 10 pack or something. Um, and you can break those up and give those to people. But I always like to try and attach one, at least something beach body related that will introduce them to a different product so that they will, again, fall in love with the product and they will eventually buy that, which is more volume for you, right? So um, the e, e works really great for that. Uh, the free workout DVDs that you get with your workouts, those are really good little prizes too. Um, another thing that has been kind of fun is these little medals. I had these made. These were these were actually really affordable, surprisingly, and I can give you guys the contact for this person that engraves these. But on the front it says Beach Body Challenge, and on the back it says I have you can have it custom engraved, and it says strength doesn't come from what you can do; it comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't. So these are really fun for people as like your your challenge group winner um, to give to them. Again, I already touched about, talked about the headbands and hair ties, things like that. Just little little things, lip glosses. Um, if you're going to Summit, you'll be able to, to buy a little swag like this. Um, this is just a little wrist sweatband. I would definitely suggest stocking up on some inexpensive things at Summit. Um, but you always want to include a handwritten note with that so that you, you know, or, or a phone call or something and just, just send them, you know, their prizes and things that way. So anyway, Bria, that is all I had. I'm going to stop my screen share here. That's awesome. Shay, thank you so much. I feel like, um, this is a weak point for me. So I, I certainly took a lot away and like I have, I have some questions and just some comments. Um, so maybe I'll throw them out there first and let suggest that anyone else who's on the call, if you have questions, you know, maybe start thinking about those to ask Shay. But um, I really love this the whole concept of that bigger picture in mind. You know, making sure that you're taking people through a journey, and it also helps to kind of encourage them to move them ultimately from a challenger to getting to results into um, into a coach. So I had a question. I think, and I think I kind of missed it. When you talked about the work at Wednesday, was that the day that you said you would tag people? Did you have them post a picture and tag you on it publicly if they would do that for you? Yes. Yeah. Or on Thursday, Thursday, if I'm doing like a, some kind of a challenge for that, like the chugging contest or something. But typically whenever I'm doing a challenge, a little mini challenge, it's, that's when I want them to tag me and that kind of shows me who, who will actually do that. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. And I also, um, that whole concept of the ingredient hunter challenge, how smart, like I just hadn't even thought about that, but it's such a great way to like for you to learn more about it and also to encourage people to really understand what Shakeology is and what it does for you. Um, so do you just kind of present it to them? Like, you know, like, yeah, here's the, the, that's what you say is just your challenge today is to look at the bag, pick an ingredient and, and tell us what it is sort of thing. Yep. Basically. And I tell them, you know, I understand that you don't have a whole lot of time. So feel free to just Google it or something and just copy and paste what you learn. But, but definitely, you know, read what you, the information that you find out. I don't expect them to like spend a lot of time on it, but it's fun because then you can go through and you can read what everybody, it, you can see what everyone picks up on. Like some people will be like, Oh, Himalayan salt. I didn't realize that that was good for you or whatever, you know? And so it's just, it's a fun way to, to do that. And like I said, there are so many times that you ask people, have you actually looked at the ingredients and they haven't because they just, you know, they don't, or they don't know what they're looking at or why it's beneficial, like maca or spirulina, things like that. People don't typically know the benefits of that. Yeah, that was so smart. And sorry, I will let other people ask questions. I apologize. I just, I'm letting you think. <laughs> um, when you talk about creating a culture in the 
and, and belief in the products and the company. Is, is that sort of one of those opportunities to do so? And when you're sending out samples or other products, is that how you do that? Absolutely. Yep. Um, I, I also, sometimes I share, like if I have a welcome uh, message that I've done like a video or something, I'll share a little bit about like, why I love coaching and why I love the company and why I chose to work with the company. Mm. And for me and my team, I really love this, the starfish story. If yeah. you guys are all familiar with that. So a lot of times I'll, I'll actually use that as an example and say, you know, for example, our CEO, Carl Deichler stood up on stage at summit and which is our big, you know, party or whatever. And instead of talking numbers and, and pie charts and things like that, he talked about this story and I was, and I just feel like things like that, they need to know and kind of like create that love for the, the culture of what we do. And so it's not, they don't feel like they're just in an MLM, like we're selling to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's really great. And my last question is, do you have an actual document of how you do, like if you're going to do a point system for prizes, do you have a doc on that? Um, it depends. I don't have, I could probably drum one up. Mine really changed depending on what I'm doing. So, you know, like I said, if I'm, if I'm doing kind of like a specialized group, like the muscles and mascara or things like that, um, I, I, it changes. Yeah. So I could definitely create something and give it to you to, wow. to give to the team. No, you don't need to go out of your way. I just was curious if you had a structure that you liked that, that worked for you, you found or was easy to track or because I know that that's something I get a lot of questions about is like this concept of putting challenges in the groups or, or incentivizing the challengers that way. And I haven't done it yet. So I'm and I, I know that there's some struggles with like adding the adding up of the points and the tracking of the points. Yeah. Rec recommend that they track their own points in a document in the challenge group or? I do. I do. The only tricky thing about a document is that they can't um, edit it from a, a mobile device. And so sometimes I have done like an actual post that they will need to just comment on their points, like at the end of the week or the end of the day. It really kind of changes depending on my, how I feel about it, I guess, at the time. I'm, I think I'm trying to dial that in. <laughs> um, but, you know, another thing, too, that I, that I didn't mention that I think is always a great idea is to have a day or some time set aside to answer their questions. And what I mean by that is, like, privately message me or ask here on the wall the questions for the week, and I will make – a video or I'll answer them all on Friday or something like that. Um, definitely I did that in my specialty groups because I was like, okay, what do you want to learn? Do you want to learn how to contour, how to cat eye, things like that. And so it was fun because they would actually, they'd get really excited to ask their questions and then I would give them a video answering their questions for the week. So that's something I, I left out. I just thought of. That's great. Um, what other questions do you guys have for Shaylin while she's on with us? If you can, if you have any, just unmute and go ahead. Um, I'll just jump in. Uh, oh, maybe I should just go in another room. Things are getting. Shailen, sorry. <laughs> I don't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump I in think and then just. Into the park. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, thanks, by the way, for the shout out about my my thing. I literally had a screaming baby this whole time during my workout, trying to listen to this call. And I heard that part. Um, but yeah, I, I also, I was stuck for a really long time on this point system. So I figured it out for myself, but I wanted to ask you more about your point system. Um, but I'll just share what, like my challenge thing that I figured out, cause it's been working really well. So, um, I do do it for the last 10 days of the group. Um, for my 30-day group, so it goes from day 21 to day 30. And for those days, there's no, like, daily official post. Um, everyone just posts up to three selfies, a Shakeology, um, a post-workout, and a water or healthy food. And it doesn't have to be their face. It doesn't have to be a selfie, but um, those three things. And then a reason for each of them, like why they work out or, or research an ingredient in Shakeology or why they drink water or... Um, research something about the healthy food and then so it's up to six points each day for 10 days so that's why I finally like 
I didn't do any challenges like this for like a year because I couldn't figure out how I was going to add up all the points or keep track of the points. But this made it so simple because it was like each day up to three pictures and up to three reasons. So I could just go through um, each day or usually I would just wait till the end and I would go through and just add up everyone. But um, okay, so my question then is for yours. So you are you doing like mini challenges randomly and then adding them up in total or are you having like a few different, are you having a different winner on each day or are you having like overall winners? How are you doing it? I kind of do it both ways. So I have an overall winner at the end, depending on, um, I don't necessarily like to have it be like whoever lost the most weight or whatever. So I do like to try and whoever, whoever was most engaged in the group or, or whatever. Um, and I'll actually have my challengers vote on who they think should win the challenge. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I do, I do that as like an overall prize, which would probably be like the medal or something that I showed. Um, and then, so for the, the midweek, that one's just a, just a small little add on mini challenge that I, that I do just to kind of keep them like, Hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay engaged and, and things with the group. Does that answer your question? So like for those mini challenges, do you give little prizes for that too? Like, is there just a winner of the day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'll do three of those. So I'll have three, three just little mini, and that's typically when I do just like the little packet of eating and a thank you card or something like that. Okay, and then do you like just express it in the post? Like this is your challenge for the day and whoever does this the best gets a prize? Yep. Okay. Sometimes if, if I really need them to, to get, you know, moving and shaking, I'll, and depending on how generous I'm feeling, I'll actually say whoever participates period we'll get a packet of any or, or whatever yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah that's what i was doing for the selfie competition so i was like everyone who participates in this for the 10 days everyone gets um a prize so i've been sending everyone e and e and i've been making a collage on pick monkey with all the pictures from the challenge and then printing it and then putting that in a card that's genius i love that I just started this. It took like a year like to figure this out. Oh, I'm still trying to figure it all out. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing too, again, I like to always kind of revert back to, it's nice to have you tagged in these pictures and to see who will, who will post them on their wall. So I, sometimes I have said, okay, well you get, you know, for speaking in, in point system, um, you know, you've got a potential three points per day by doing your, you know, your workout, your shakeology and your, your post-workout selfie or whatever. Um, and you'll get an extra bonus five points if you tag me in your workout selfie and post it on your wall. Okay. So like the normal, the normal posts are like in the group, but you'll have a bonus one for like on their wall. Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, I haven't done that part. I should add that on. That's awesome. Anyone else have a question tonight for Shay? Yeah, I have a question. This is very basic, I guess. But does everybody in the challenge group have to have a challenge pack? I thought I heard someone say that sometimes we invite people who are looking at it so they can see what it's like. People that have not purchased a challenge pack yet. Sorry, my dog's whining in the background. <laughs> um, so no, I, I, I don't know how, Bria, how you would answer this, but I actually do require that everyone purchase a yeah. challenge. Occasionally I do let people repeat challenges with me, especially if they feel like they didn't do so great the first time or if they feel like they really need to keep going um, and they want more than just my accountability group. So I will let some repeat challengers in. But yeah, for me, I require challenge pack. That's their ticket into the into the challenge group. I will let the ones in who are thinking about it um, for like a couple of days. But then I, I say, okay, this is the deadline. This is closing. Um, you know, this isn't anything to be mean. But whoever hasn't purchased their challenge pack by tomorrow will be removed, and that's okay. It's cool if you don't want to join, but we just have to get started. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Jody, do you have a question? Um, yes. 
I found it interesting that you said in the description that you clarified there's going to be interaction and that sort of thing. You just build that into the group description or do you put that somewhere else? I'm, I'm lacking on the um, getting them engaged, I guess. Which yeah, so I actually, that mine is kind of like a, a three points that I do there. So I do it in the general description and then I also do a post, a welcome post that they will see that's pinned at the top when they first, when I'm first putting them all into the group. Um, and, and that's pretty much the general description maybe beefed up a little bit more um, than just a little small description on the side. And it will, it will again, touch base on what to expect out of the challenge group, how they work, things like that. And then I also, if I make a welcome video, I again, I will encourage them to interact and in so that it's just constantly right from the get-go they know that that's what's expected okay and for the challengers that bought a challenge pack and want to jump into another challenge i have a few okay. who've just gone from their second now they're into a third oh, me too. <laughs> i don't mind i mean i'm happy to have people in the group they're not saying a lot and i'm not sure i don't want them to lose the the drive that comes with the challenge group. You know, if it just becomes something that's happening every day, then I don't want them to get lazy or, you know, disengage, but I don't want to stop them from connecting if they want it. So how do you balance that out? Well, and that's, that's kind of always tricky because I think it's a, a case by case scenario. So, you know, if you have them, they want to continue to jump into your challenge groups, but they're not, they're not providing anything to the group and they're not really even checking in, then I would just kind of touch base with them on a personal message and say, hey, you know, I'd love to continue to support you, but maybe, maybe you've grown out of a challenge group. Maybe I can put you into an accountability group where I will, you know, touch base with you once a week. Would that be more fitting for what you, what you need right now? Or do you want to just, do you want me to just touch base with you every couple weeks personally through a message and, and make sure you're on track? Like, you know, do you want me to give you recipes or, or anything like that? And I think it's just really, it, it's on a case by case scenario. I have one that she just keeps messaging me and she's like, I just keep me, I need it. I need it again. I need it again. And, um, I do continue to keep letting her in because she stays active and she, so it kind of sets the tone and the nice. pace for the rest of the group. And so I'm like, okay, well, I know she's going to actually get people revved up. But if you have people that are kind of pulling the group down, I would probably gently pull them out and see what maybe would best fit their situation. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else yeah. have a question? Yeah. I do. Go for it. Um, the accountability group. Do you have like a whole nother group? for past challengers? Yeah, here's my disclaimer. I have been terrible about this, and this is something I'm working on. So I do have a funnel group. Basically, it's whoever wants to continue to be held accountable, they are put into this funnel group, and um, or my dump group, or whatever you can call it. That just sounds so impersonal. <laughs> a, grad but I do group, think a grad group. Yes, a grad group. Thank you, Bria. I just, it was on like my brain, but I, I have mom brain like you guys would believe. Um, but yeah, so I, I do have that, although I need to be better about putting people into it to just to be completely honest with you. Um, but that's not one that I'm going to post in every day. I check in, I check into it maybe like once a week. I kind of leave that for them to, if they, if they need the accountability for them to post in there and interact with each other. That's a good idea. I like that. Bria, I don't know how you how you run your graduate groups, but um, well, I used to run one, and then I found I didn't really. Um, I, I tend to either make people become a coach. <laughs> it's like either you become a coach, you buy a new program, and join another group, or I'll call you in two months and we'll we'll give you the same options. That's sort of what it comes down to. But I see a lot of value in that grad group. I was just. I personally, like my weak spot, another one of my weak spots is posting content and I was finding it hard to post, think of something to post in there. So um, I just stopped and then I just figured it's better not to have it. But I think that- Yeah, um, I'm glad I'm not the only one. That's definitely not my strong suit. 
yeah. I, like you said, Bria, I would rather them see them be a coach or and to coach their own group or or something. Yeah. Or continue to, to message them privately. Yeah, I must be doing things strangely. I've got I've got two coaches that are very strong participants in the in the challenge group and they've been like four or five months they've been with me, you know, they really add a lot. And one of them starting to post, you know, she, she started to take over a little bit. And then I've got a graduate group that I put anybody who's gone through a challenge that doesn't want to repeat. And I post in that every day, some, something from um, the compound effect. And so those two coaches, they're, they're looking at that and they're, they're always commenting, but they're like the only ones. So I'm duplicating, I don't know. Are those discount coaches or are they actively coaching? They're actively coaching. Maybe, I don't know, Bri, what you would suggest, but what I would do, what I've done with my coaches um, is I actually link them up as success partners if they get along really well. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I have them work together on creating their own challenge groups. Ah. So like, leave the nest a little bit, create your own challenge group. Now that I've shown you how I do mine, now go create your own together. Yeah. Oh, they would be great together. They've gotten to be good friends. So. And that kind of takes the pressure off of you. Send them out of the nest, Suzanne. Send them out of the nest. What is that? Uh, off they go. Say they leave again. the nest. Leave the nest. I love them so much. <laughs> they help me. <laughs> I don't want them to leave. You have to make room for a new baby. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll have to. Well, it's hard, it's hard to get new babies. <laughs> yeah, Suzanne, you gotta get new babies in there. I'm having trouble with these. Everyone new has to move through the system. Yeah, new babies. Yeah, maybe, I'm, maybe if I got rid of the big babies, I'd have a new baby. Yes, if you sometimes you need to make space, right? Can't grow a baby right. Right okay. in there. <laughs> I would just right. say I'll on try. that topic though, Terry, like I think I've heard a lot of really successful people have this grad group where they put people in and maybe, and they almost use it as their own accountability where they check in there two to three times a week. And they're kind of just posting their own, like, this is what I did today, or this was a great recipe I had. It's what I drank for Shakeology. And it's really the, yeah. the things that motivated them just to kind of keep people around. And then I think that's also a great place to start when to share new program launches to talk about new challenge groups that you are going to run in case people have fallen off Shakeology, um, things like that. Like a funnel. I love because I lost a lot of people from Shakeology, so. Yeah. Yeah, I have um, a graduate group and it took a long time to get it going, but um, I, I can be posted in it. Um, I made it like in probably in the end of last summer and I consistently posted in it. I post my, my check-ins um, and I have like a, a theme for each day. So I'm not coming up with content every day for it. I'm just like posting simple stuff or whatever I post on my like page, I'll share into that group as the daily post. So it's not a lot of extra work and it's a lot busier now. Like people are finally moving on it. And then you see like everyone in there drinking Shakeology doing really well. And then those that aren't doing as well or the ones not drinking Shakeology obviously is how it all goes down. But they see the other people thriving long-term and I think it creates kind of that culture and it helps to get those people that are falling off. It gives them a place to keep jumping back in or to keep seeing people being successful with this. I mean, now that people are finally posting in there, it was just me posting in there for like six months. <laughs> but now it's moving. Jody wanted to know if that was one grad group for all your grads. You just put everyone in yes. one group, right? Yeah, one group. Every single person. I set this expectation at the end of the challenge group. I make a video or a post and I say, here are your next steps. And now everyone's posting in my grad group because it's going right off of that selfie challenge. So I have that 10 day selfie challenge. Everyone's already used to posting for those days and they're, they're all into it and they like posting. They like seeing everyone else's faces and sweaty faces and everyone else's food and stuff, not just my crap every day. So then when they, now when they go right into the graduate group, they're posting and they're posting pictures and they're all, and they already have been interacting with each other. So I think all of this has made a, a big difference. So it's good. Yeah. I, I'm anxious to try. It. I love that. Love Great idea. Yeah. All right, guys, any other questions for Shay? 
you know, we it's always such great discussion with everyone. So I don't want to cut it off, but um, we're getting late, and I really, really appreciate your time. I want. I think this has been. This is sorry. Does anyone have any questions before I keep going? No, I just want to say thank you so much, Shaylin, yeah. for for joining our call. Like it's so great to. This has been amazing. You guys are an amazing team. I can't wait to see you all just like your and your your coach, your leader is you all know it. She's a rock star. You're all in really great hands. That's very nice. <laughs> um, I just want to say about this call, like um, you know, it's I find that we're really busy. Like there's always so many things to think about as a coach, but um, once you get people into a challenge group, like what happens to your challengers is is what will happen in your business like it's so important that we give them an amazing experience and that's something i have certainly forgotten in some time throughout my almost two years and then i'm like what am i doing i mean these are the, the these people spent this money and i'm like they're the people you should be giving a little extra time to really and they're the people that you want to make sure get an amazing experience they bought this thing help them get through that so that's something i always remind myself this is a great call to help us uh, stay on track with where we're putting our effort and how we're really and truly impacting lives here through these groups so thank you for that that was amazing Awesome. Well, I'm going to call it. I think that you guys have been, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to be on the call tonight. You are all, you are, Shay's right. You guys are all so amazing. I know it's a lot to ask to be here, but I think the training is worthwhile. So thank you so much. And um, I'll stop recording now, but have a great, a great cup last couple weeks of June. Bye.